All right, you guys, I think it's time we finally took this thing for a little maiden voyage since we've done all the work. So welcome back to Channel Anderson. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. All right, I got it fired up. Uh, if you guys saw a recent video, actually, I don't know if it's in the right order, so I'm not even gonna say, but we're doing a little bit of work on it and uh, I raised the coilovers up a bit in the front. Still plenty low, but uh, it was way too low before, so. That's going to help out a little bit, just overall ride and uh, make it easier to work on too, lifting it up and all that stuff. So, plan is I'm just going to take it for a quick little cruise around the neighborhood right now, and uh, after that, bring it right back to this spot. We need to get this thing cleaned up because, regardless if I'm going to keep working on the garage or whatever, it's got to be cleaned off. It's filthy right now. So, I'm going to do that, and honestly, I may be pulling out the fuel pump again because. I just want to double check and make sure that that little elbow band that I put in it is not getting uh, pressed on by the top hat of the uh, fuel bucket. So I might pull it out and actually use a stainless steel wire instead of the zip ties or the zip ties doesn't matter, but put that pump lower down in the bucket so there's no chance of that line, uh, main line interfering. So we'll get to that, but uh, let's go ahead and take it for a quick cruise around the neighborhood. Hopefully in doing so we can uh, shake some of this dust off and uh, <laughs> get it a little cleaner before we wash it off. All right, you guys, we're out. This thing is loud, that did not change, so <laughs> cruising it around, once you get to like 2500 RPM, it's blaringly uh, drony, so we're just cruising it, we're doing nothing special. All right, guys, we're back home. Nothing spectacular, like I said, I'm just cruising around the neighborhood. I need to open up the fuel pump because I'm just, I'm not confident in that hose being unkinked. So I'm gonna do that now and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, and one failure did come back, so I'm pretty sure we just need uh, the oil level sensor or um, I'll need to check the wiring that's going to it. We got lucky, I thought, from cleaning it up, um, but it looks like it's back, so. We'll keep uh, an eye on that and uh, just see what happens. All right guys, so fuel pump assembly is opened up and it doesn't look like um, that feed line was getting pressed down, but it, again, it's hard to tell though because once that cap gets put on, I mean, you can't see underneath obviously. So uh, I think what I'm gonna try to do is pull this out of here and I'm gonna redo the zip ties anyway with stainless steel wire because uh, even though they're most likely nylon and they won't break down in the fuel, they will get brittle and they could break over time and then the fuel pump would just drop and it'd be flopping all over the place. So we're going to redo this. Should have done it the first time, but you know, I was excited. Didn't know what I was doing. So live and learn. All right, you guys, fuel assembly is out. Honestly, super easy now that I know what I'm doing. So let me talk you guys through. And also a couple of things to point out. Uh, number one, this connector right here had the little, you know, like rubber grommets in here. Those things were not fuel resistant. Those got swollen up like a balloon and were just basically jelly pieces like silica gel. So there's more in here, I think. So I'm gonna take those out. Um, yeah, just weird. So I'm gonna get rid of them altogether. Uh, not gonna risk that falling into the fuel tank and trying to get picked up. So that said, uh, all I gotta do is really simple. I'm just redoing what I did here with stainless steel instead of the zip ties. And I'm also gonna hang it a bit down lower so that the filter is closer to the bottom here and so that this is not as close to the top hat as we were. And also, let me go grab the top hat so we can see here outside of the car. All right guys, so good news is it wasn't kinking it. I mean, it's definitely bending it a little bit, but it's not kinking it by any means, so that's really good, so if I lower that down, then it'll be even more free, which will be good. So that's at least good. If it was like majorly kinked, I don't think the car would have been running anyways, or it would have been doing something really weird, but we were getting those weird startups and stuff, so um, you know, possibly, maybe it could be a part of the problem, or having the fuel pump not all the way down to the bottom of the bucket could be a problem too, on those initial startups until it gets fuel all the way in it and then go, But I don't think so just because the auxiliary pump feeds into this thing like when I pull this out is all the way full um, so auxiliary pump fills this thing up pretty good as long as the tank has 
you know, at least, you know, less than a quarter tank in it, um, it'll fill it up. So anyways, we're just making this thing better than it was. That's it. So let's get this done get it back in the car and uh, go for another drive. All right, guys. And here's what I've ended up with. Not pretty, but tight and it'll do the job. So drop us in, reinstall. All right, guys, fuel pump assembly is back in. I'm going to go ahead, test fire the car, get fuel pressure, all that stuff. And then we need to give this thing a bath. ASAP. Alright guys, tank is not all the way buttoned up, but it's sealed, so let's go ahead and make sure everything's working. Clock's going crazy because battery. Alright, pump is on, that's good. Alright, you can hear it from, coming from the sender now. See what the rail's at. All right, rail is good. Let's go ahead and give it a test fire. Okay, here we go. All right, much better than earlier. Lock front passenger seat. We don't have a passenger, I think we're okay, but anyways. There we go, reserve fuel. All right, well, let it idle here for a little bit and let's wash this thing off. All right, guys, she idled fine. Gave her through a few throttle blips. Uh, I'm gonna go around first, vacuum all of the little crevices before I even start washing it. Mostly just by the hood and then over here by the trunk. Man, if you guys don't live in the Pacific Northwest or somewhere with trees, you just don't know the struggle of the pine needle life. <laughs> They just get everywhere, all over the place, every nook and cranny possible, pine needles, dry leaves, everything. So, step number one, vacuum it out. doing much guys. <laughs> oh my god. guys well she's clean for the most part kind of ran out of my soap that I had so uh, didn't get as spotless as I'd like it but it'll do the job for now um, things to talk about as far as the paint goes you guys saw me scrubbing extra hard on the fenders um, it had some clear coat overspray from when I sprayed the underside of the hood um, so lesson learned about that I should have tossed a moving blanket or something over the fenders when I was doing that, but I got it off for the most part and I can polish out whatever I didn't get, so not a big deal. Um, headlights, I'm gonna polish right now, so they're definitely faded. There is a spot on here that I can't really tell what is going on, but we'll see once I start polishing. Um, so, see about that. Uh, other things, front bumper, I already knew, and the back bumper a little bit have some clear coat failure going on, so those could be resprayed at some point. Um, or just re-cleared at least. Uh, but besides that, like paint overall was smooth. Definitely need a uh, clay mitt or something to go over the whole car, as I do for every single one of the cars I own, to be honest. So nothing out of the norm as far as what we're used to. So let's go ahead and set you guys up. And I'm gonna take care of the headlights. All right, so you guys can see already on one pass how much that does, so watch what happens when I do three, four more. All right guys, 
driver's side is done. That little mark on there, um, I can try to sand, but I gotta find my uh, proper sandpaper to use on that. I'll probably have to start pretty heavy and then work my way up to like a thousand, two thousand grit, um, which I probably have laying around, but I gotta find it, so I'm not gonna mess with it now. But came a long way <laughs> from the fogginess, so let's go ahead, get this one up to par. Alright guys, well, she's all cleaned up. Again, I got no show cars here, but uh, as far as exterior paint and perfection goes, but uh, all of them are focused on performing and running and having fun. So, let's see some leftover polish I didn't get. Uh, so, try to spend some time just going over a few things. Nothing crazy, but um, definitely, like I said, need to uh, get a clay mitt or a clay bar and go over, especially the front side. Um, I got buddies now that can do some painting, so that's something I would like to do. Re-clear the bumpers at some point. Um, maybe respray the hood. Luckily, it's the easiest color on earth to match. Um, it's basically 040 black. I don't know if they changed that with later models, but it's basically just a black with no sparkle in it. Um, and let me know what you guys think as well about the grill. Should I return to the factory chrome with the chrome star? I'm not sure yet. Uh, something I will do is fog light delete and uh, put in my own style um, honeycomb mesh like I did on the C55, and a lot of you guys asked me about that, and I never made a video for it, this, it was just a project I did on my own. Um, so, I will do that and make a video for it, fog light delete, and do my own honeycomb mesh, get rid of this chicken wire stuff that they use from factory, show you guys how I do it, it's super cool, super cheap, um, and it looks great, show you what I'm talking about. So, right there. That is what we did for all of our grills. Makes it look much more modern. And uh, I'm just a fan of the no fog light look. So uh, they are cool, don't get me wrong. But in this case, this one's full of water. Uh, it looks like at some point somebody tried to splice in like an LED kit or something. And yeah, they're just, I'd, I'd rather delete them. So we'll get rid of those, sell them off and uh, yeah, I don't have the back seats in yet. I'm not going to do that until I go out for a few days and make sure I'm happy with the fuel pump setup and all that stuff. But very cool to be at this point. It's finally clean. It was sitting in this spot for a long, long time and sat in the garage for a while. You guys know why we did a bunch of little jobs. Still got a bunch of little jobs to do, but for the most part, I think she's ready to start uh, putting her through her paces. And uh, just going through everything to make sure what needs more attention. Um, there's still definitely things that I want to change or modify, but for now, um, we've done a lot. <laughs> so if you guys have been with me on this journey since picking up the car, when did I even get it? Like February maybe? Uh, February... April, maybe April actually April May June that sounds more right maybe the end of April but I'll have to look back at the videos but if you guys have been with me since then thank you guys it's been a slow process but we're finally at the point where I'm gonna start trying to daily driving this thing to be honest I'm gonna share between this and the C36 and uh, once I get confident in it and it's working good as a normal car and doing all the things that it should be doing then we can start you know ramping it up a little bit and once I get full confidence in it the plan is do a track day with these two things um, probably like a drag strip day to be honest because uh, it would just be fun It'd be a different different experience I've never been to a drag strip um, and it would just I think it'd be a lot of fun so let's go ahead and fire it up I'm curious um, See if it still does the weird cold start. And I'm thinking about 
driving over to go get some gas right now too. All right guys, and the number one fan of this car is right here. He's been waiting a long time for this. What do you think? What form is this? <laughs> this is the one that you kept asking about, remember? I think it's almost ready now. You wanna start it up? Yeah. I got the keys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on over here. <laughs> You ready? Yeah. This over here. Can I see us? There we go. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's get some fuel up in it a few times. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, that's a little computer that kind of tells what's going on with the car. It's called an ultra gauge. What is it going on with it? It says RPM, boost PSI, intake temperature, and engine temperature. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> you want to hear this bad boy? Yeah. Listen, here. Sit here, watch. Turn it off? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go. All right, guys. Well, he's ready to play video games, so I'm going to go inside. I'll check back with you guys once we go fill it up. All right, guys. First trip to go get some gas. Let's do it. All right. It's been sitting for a while, so it's probably cold again. See how she starts up. way here shortly. Camera battery's almost dead so I might switch to the phone. We'll see. Alright you guys, fun fact also, forgot we had agility mode. We got my boy Josh on here, Mercedes swap shop with a TCU tune, I forgot about that. So yeah, agility mode, trying it out. Alright, first time on the street since I've had it at home. <laughs> this is crazy. Fill it up, I'll check back in. All right, you guys, $30 later. Just put a little bit in it. We'll fill it up for sure, for sure, at Costco later. But, uh, got a half tank, that's good. All right, let's head home. guys <laughs> took a turn for the worse luckily I don't think it's terrible but uh, I'm not making it home right now so bet you didn't expect this clip uh, brother oh guys <laughs> thank you to Ryan what a lifesaver man oh man big appreciation to you guys out there that are driving tow trucks around and in particular Ryan helped us out big time tonight. Thank you. He's he's uh, got a Jeep SRT. He's super built, like 900 horsepower. He's actually selling right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help him out and post it on my story and hopefully try to get him an interested buyer. But did you guys think the video is gonna end like this? <laughs> I know I did not. All right, guys. Well, preliminary thoughts. The Hellcat fuel pump is in it. Could be drawing too much amperage, too much voltage. 
Josh says check the front SAM. So I'm gonna go around with a light tester and check that out. I'm exhausted. I have work tomorrow. Not gonna happen in this video, sorry guys. Um, damn, that sucks though. I was literally, I drove it around. I did a second gear pull off camera because I was just feeling it out. And I was literally looping back at that spot to try and go do it again on camera for you guys. Cause it ripped when it went, but just didn't go for long. So <laughs> shit, man. All right. Well, that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. You guys, uh, this is the life of modifying cars. This is the life of my channel, a part of it. It's a reality, I should say, of my channel, of doing all the stuff that I do. It doesn't always go perfect, doesn't always go as planned, and not everything that glitters is gold, as we've talked about on the bins and on a budget type stuff. So, we'll get it figured out. I'll give you guys an update soon. Fingers crossed, it's nothing too crazy. But I don't know yet. So, catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed everything up to the point of it getting towed. And maybe you even enjoyed that. It was entertaining. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. Catch you on the next one. Peace.